Hello and welcome back to the Euro Expert channel. We're doing that thing again, helping you with your fantasy football team from an expert. Definitely didn't tell you to pick uh, Burak Yilmaz in your Euro, Euro fantasy team. It doesn't matter though because league seasons is my field. So I'm going to be able to help you a lot with this. I'm going to talk you through my team for match day one and generally through the season. Uh, you'll kind of see how. In goal, we have Alisson. Uh, the reason is because you really want a top six goalkeeper, I think, to make sure you've got the best chance of conceding a small amount of goals. And Liverpool have invested heavily in their defence. And after last season, I think it'll be one of Klopp's priorities. If anything, I think the attack will drop off slightly. Uh, especially with Norwich on match day one, it's Alisson in goal for me. My first defender starting is Trent Alexander-Arnold. On a similar vein to Alisson, you know, Liverpool should have a very strong defence and, and Trent is going to be the one player who will start consistently in that defence. Like, he's not going to be going anywhere. Statistically, he's a fantastic player and he should be on a bit more of a bounce next season. He's another year older. Whatever Gareth Southgate thinks, he's not really on a decline or he's not going through that much of a bad form. So he should rebound very well. Next to him, I have Nelson Semedo. Now, if you watched my video on Bruno Lange, you would know that uh, at Benfica, he was very hot on his fullbacks. You could see that with Alex Grimaldo. And I think Nelson Semedo is going to be someone who really benefits in the Lange era. Now, Semedo last season, he... He definitely took a while to get going. By the end, he was doing okay for Wolves, but Wolves as a whole weren't doing too good. But I think largely will revert to a back four, and Semedo should have a lot more time on that right-hand side and a lot more space to run into and make overlapping runs. I actually think this is going to be a really, really good season for him. The final defender I've got at the moment is Luca Adigne. Uh, now, there's a bit of an injury worry about him. He actually uh, got injured during the Euros, which is one of the reasons why... Um, France fell apart. Another good prediction from me. He was actually one of the best left backs in the Premier League last season, the best full backs rather, at least statistically wise. And I think he passed the eye test as well, and he does take set pieces at times. So Digne's always a good hit. He, he got a lot of points in FPL last season too. With Rafa Benitez as well, you should be worried about Everton. I don't think they're going to score many goals, but Benitez's style is being uh, defensively switched on and just basically annoying the hell out of the other team by knowing them as much as possible, marking them out of the game, showing them onto their weaker foot, uh, tactically beating them, filling spaces. So they shouldn't concede too many goals and uh, Digne should be one of the best be beneficiaries of that. The first midfielder I've got is uh, Kai Havertz. Now I think by the end of this season we're going to see him change to um, a striker position in FPL like I think for the next year. But I'm keeping him in at the moment. I've got another player coming up as well I think will benefit at Chelsea. Uh, uh, e even if Lukaku comes in, I still expect Havertz to make a lot of minutes and e e with another season in the Premier League and he's another year older, what he's going on to 22 now, he should really start hitting some good form. So Kai Havertz, I expect to have a good season. And against Crystal Palace, even though I've got high hopes for uh, Patrick Vieira, I think in match day one, uh, Palace should concede quite a few goals against Chelsea. Next to him, I've got, I think the only Arsenal player I have in this team is Bukayo Saka. Arsenal are a bit of a weird one in terms of they could be really good like over the last six months I think the back end of the season they're one of the, I think it was the top five teams in the Premier League in terms of points collected since I think December since their their win over Chelsea they really turned things up but at the same time in that period they lost in the Europa League to Villarreal to Unai Emery. Next to him we've got a, a player that will cheer some West Ham fans up uh, Saeed Ben Rahman. Now last season he didn't really contribute much to the Premier League despite some lot of high hopes. I think he's one of those players that some people thought was a January signing but he wasn't. I just completely forgot about him. But he's looked really good in pre-season. And last season as well, I think dribble numbers, he was actually pretty good in the Premier League. Um, I expect him to take a much bigger role in this West Ham side, especially with Jesse Lingard gone. Uh, I'm having high hopes for West Ham, although they are playing Newcastle away, which is a fixture they lost at the back end of the last season. So I'm a bit worried about him for this first match day, but I think David Moyes is still an excellent manager. And I think Ben Rama will have a good season at West Ham. Uh, next thing we've got an obvious shout is Mohamed Salah, uh, my third Liverpool player, the captain as well going into match day one. Um, that's simply because on paper Liverpool gets Norwich that should be the easiest win and Salah is always the easiest bet to score goals there's no reason why he shouldn't this season he will be out I believe for the African Cup of Nations which will throw a lot of FPL teams into the air but still it's going to be very good uh, for the first half of the season 
And yeah, I'll get a captain in because I think he will score some goals against Norwich. Now we're getting a bit more exciting. Up front, my first player is Fabio Silva. Again, in my Bruno Lage video, I think Silva will uh, play a lot more for Wolves next season. I think he's going to be a lot more chilled. Um, a lot of pressure was put on him when Jimenez was injured. Jimenez is back. Um, Silva should still get a lot of minutes though. I think Silva will benefit well under Bruno Lage, especially after what Lage did with um, Jao um, ja Felix sorry, at Benfica. You would have seen that in my video. He did, um, he's basically the man who launched uh, Felix's career, so it'd be interesting to see what he could do with a youngster of uh, Fabio Silva's quality. Down the middle, we have got Timo Werner. First of all, I'm a little biased because I do have a £50 bet that he'll be one of the top five Premier League goal scorers this season, and that is mainly because I felt sorry for him. Still, if Lukaku comes in, uh, Werner, like uh, Lautaro Martinez, should be one of the main beneficiaries of, um, of, of, of uh, uh, Lukaku because the Kaku will take a lot of pressure off of him. I think Werner last season was getting doubled up on by defenders quite often, especially inside the box. With the Kaku, that's a percentage more attention paid to another player that should lift the reins off Werner, give him a bit more space, and give him a bit more confidence and time, and also just pre taking pressure off him. It's clearly confidence just disintegrated over the course of last season. I think he's going to rebuild it this year, and I expect a healthy season for him. Although, saying what I said, with Lukaku coming in, that kind of means Werner won't score as many goals, so top five Premier League goal scorers is quite a bit of an I might lose 50 The final striker is Chris Wood. Now, if you saw my TikTok about uh, Premier League bargains, uh, you should go for it. It's Chris Wood. He scored 10 Premier League goals in every single Premier League season he's played in. I think he scored 10, Premier League, 10 season goals, sorry, every season since 2015. At 7 million, he's a bargain. They're playing Brighton, who have got a good defence, but... Over the course of the season, when Burnley score goals, which they will, and they will stay up because Sean Dyche is an underrated genius, Wood will be getting those goals, and he's an easy player in my FPL team. On the bench, we have got Robert Sanchez. Uh, I think he's one of the most picked goalkeepers, mainly because at four and a half million, Robert Sanchez, easy pick up for me, um, but I haven't played him because I want to put Allison in as much as possible. Next to him, we've got Daniel Amati. Um, it's about time Armati starts getting some good minutes and plaudits. He's been around Leicester for a while, and obviously in the Community Shield, he played like a rock in defence against Manchester City. And with the injuries Leicester are facing, and with the lack of depth they've currently got in defence, I think Armati's going to get a lot of minutes, and I think Leicester will still be getting some clean sheets, and they'll still be picking up a lot of points. I think Armati will be a big part of that. Next in, we've got Jack Harrison. You need Jack Harrison in your team. He's like 6 million, and he got... He was in like the top 10 for points last season, at least in midfielders. There's no way he doesn't get in your team. In fact, the only reason he isn't starting for me is because it's Man United away, and we saw how that went last season. But Leeds should still be good. I expect them to dip in form personally, but Harrison will still be on the end of some good goals and assists, so he's in this team. Finally, we have Sergio Reguillon. Again, a bit like Werner. A lot of promise last season. He didn't quite deliver. I think he should be good. Uh, this season. I'll be interested to see what he does in a Nuno 3 at the back system, which he probably will deploy as the season goes on. Uh, I want to see him as a wing back, but yeah, I think Reguillon, he has to do well, but I'm benching him because Manchester City. What did you think of my team, everybody? Let me know uh, down below. Thank you very much for watching. Please subscribe, and next season, next episode, sorry, we will uh, we'll be doing a, a biography, not of a manager, but of Noni Madueke. See you guys.